This video is sponsored by Aura, smart, simple, online safety. In 2014, three-year-old William Tyrrell disappeared from his grandmother's home in Kendal, New South Wales, while playing in his Spider-Man suit. The incident triggered a widespread search across Australia, fueled by the belief that he might have been kidnapped. On the grim anniversary in 2016, a million-dollar reward was offered for his return. No strings attached. Despite the nationwide efforts, the mystery persists, leaving us with unanswered questions about the fate of the charming boy. Despite thorough searches during challenging times of fires and floods in Kendall, the question of what befell young William lingers. Detectives persist in keeping the case open, driven to uncover the boy's fate, but the mystery remains unsolved. September 11th, 2014 On September 11th, 2014, three-year-old William Tyrrell, accompanied by his foster parents and five-year-old sister, made a four-hour journey from Sydney to visit his foster grandmother in Kendall. The grandmother's house on Benarood Drive was located near the Kendall State Forest, about 35 kilometers south of Port Macquarie. Little did anyone know that what was supposed to be a vacation turned into a nightmare. September 12, 2014 Between 10 and 10.25 a.m. on September 12th, William and his sister played hide-and-seek in the front and backyard. The foster mother and grandmother watched as William imitated a tiger's roar and ran towards the side of the home. After a few minutes of silence, his foster mother, worried, began searching the yard and house. His foster father, returning from business in Lakewood, joined the search. At 10.57, Tyrrell's foster mother called Triple Zero Emergency Services, reporting him missing. The police arrived at 11.06, but the little boy had vanished. Hundreds of police, emergency service members, community volunteers, and even specialized units like the Sex Crime Squad joined the search. Motorcycles and helicopters scoured the area, divers searched waterways, and detection dogs picked up William sent only within the backyard boundaries. Despite exhaustive efforts, the mystery endured. Have you ever tried to Google your own name or email address? We have, and it's quite shocking to see your own information of private character exposed and for sale on the internet. Data brokers sell your information to scammers, spammers, and anyone else who may want to target you. Your full name, email, home address, health records, your relatives, it's all out there, and it's definitely a bad thing. That's why we've been using Aura, the sponsor of today's video. Aura shows us which data brokers are selling our information and automatically submits opt-out requests for us. Using Aura, we discovered 17 data brokers that were selling our information and it automatically took care of them all. Cleaning up our information not only helps reduce the amount of spam we get, but it protects us from hackers who could use this information to help them access our social media accounts, bank accounts, or other sensitive information. Aura also does so much more to protect our team and our families from online threats we can't see. It's really easy to set up, so we don't have to download several different apps to get things like antivirus, VPN, password management, parental controls, identity theft insurance, and more. We get everything at one affordable price. You may already have one or two of these tools, but not having Aura is like locking the front door and leaving the back door wide open. Aura is always on, doing the hard work of keeping us safe so we can focus on other tasks with peace of mind. We value our privacy, and we value yours. You can go to aura.com slash bad things to start your two-week free trial, also linked below in the description. Aura protects you from bad things on the internet. Police investigated two mysterious cars seen parked on the dead-end road on the morning of William's disappearance. A white station wagon and an older, style grey sedan with their driver's side windows down. These vehicles, noticed by William's foster mother, raised suspicions as they were unfamiliar in the friendly neighborhood. September 16, 2014 
On September 16, 2014, Strike Force Rossan, consisting of 14 detectives and analysts, was established to investigate Williams' disappearance. The team, responding to a personal plea from Williams' parents, became the state's largest investigative effort involving multiple squads and analysts. September 21, 2014 After an exhaustive nine-day search involving hundreds of volunteers and various emergency services, authorities concluded their search of neighboring homes, paddocks, bushland, and rivers. Despite the intensity of the search, William was nowhere to be found. January 20th, 2015 Kendall repairman Bill Spedding was identified as a person of interest in the case on January 20th, 2015. He was taken into a police car during a raid on his home and business. While later revealed to be wrongly targeted, at the time investigators showed that Spedding had visited William's foster grandmother's home three days before the disappearance. The case took a turn with this development, adding complexity to the already mysterious disappearance. April 16, 2015 On April 16, 2015, William Tyrrell's foster parents broke their silence in a public interview, expressing the belief that he was abducted. His mother hoped if alive, he was feeling loved and being cared for. The emotional plea highlighted the family's desperate need for closure and the impact on William's sister, who faced growing up without knowing her brother's fate. April 17, 2015 the investigation took a dark turn on April 17, 2015, as police identified a paedophile ring near Kendall as a key line of inquiry in William's disappearance. Detective Superintendent Michael Willing announced vigorous pursuit of this lead. The revelation added complexity to the case, introducing the disturbing possibility of criminal involvement. September 12, 2016 on the second anniversary of William's disappearance, September 12, 2016, the NSW government announced a historic $1 million reward. Unlike typical rewards, recovery of Tyrrell was added as a condition. This became the largest reward ever offered for a missing person in NSW's history. The case garnered global attention with over 2,800 calls to Crime Stoppers and involvement from 26 countries emphasizing its significance. However, nothing came up. August 24th, 2017 On August 24th, 2017, a significant revelation emerged as William was identified as a foster child due to a landmark ruling by the New South Wales Supreme Court. The disclosure, previously restricted by state laws, resulted from legal efforts by a Facebook group shedding light on the complex circumstances surrounding William's life. Justice Brereton acknowledged the tragic probability of William's likely death. June 12, 2018 June 12, 2018 marked a crucial development as police announced a large-scale forensic search in the bushland around Kendall. Lasting three to four weeks, the operation involved over 700 persons of interest and the discovery of over 4,000 pieces of evidence. The intensified efforts signified a renewed determination to uncover the truth about William's disappearance. Yet again, no trace of William. March 25, 2019 A significant step occurred on March 25, 2019 with the commencement of a coronial inquest into William's disappearance. Overseen by Deputy State Coroner Harriet Graham, the inquest aimed to determine whether William wandered off or was taken. The proceedings involved questioning both biological and foster parents, keeping in view William's family situation and events leading up to his disappearance. August 7, 2019 The second tranche of inquest hearings began on August 7, 2019. The coroner ordered an urgent probe into the final image taken on the day William vanished. Metadata suggested the picture may have been taken 118 minutes earlier than originally thought. The delay in the inquest raised questions, with the next round of hearings scheduled for March 2020. November 11, 2019 On November 11, 2019, during William's coronial inquest, new images emerged. CCTV footage showcased William and his foster family at a McDonald's near Newcastle at 6.30pm 
on Thursday, September 11, 2014, the day before he disappeared. These images offered glimpses into the last known moments of the family together. October 7, 2020 William's sister made an emotional plea on October 7, 2020, in the final days of his inquest. Via a phone recording played in court, she expressed hope that her speech would aid in solving the case. Determined, she asserted her future ambition to join the police force as a detective to find her brother, vowing not to give up until he was located. March 7, 2021 Tragedy struck on March 7, 2021 as William's foster grandmother passed away at the age of 88. Her death marked a poignant moment in the ongoing narrative, a figure connected to William's life no longer present. June 18, 2021 Originally set for June 18, 2021, the release of findings from William's coronial inquest faced a delay, extending the suspense surrounding the case. June 26, 2021 On June 26, 2021, which would have been William's 10th birthday, NSW police made a statement reaffirming their dedication to the case. Detective Superintendent Doherty emphasized ongoing efforts, stating, Detectives are reviewing all evidence obtained since William's disappearance. The milestone marked another year without answers for the family, heightening the urgency of the investigation. November 15, 2021 On November 15, 2021, Detective Chief Superintendent Darren Bennett announced a new lead in William's disappearance, expressing the likelihood of searching for his remains. Police initiated an operation focusing on three specific locations in the Kendall area. The search aimed to provide closure to the case, acknowledging the grim possibility that William might no longer be alive. November 16th to 17th, 2021 A new theory unfolded on November 16th, 2021, revealing a new suspect whose identity remained undisclosed for legal reasons. Investigators were seen digging beneath William's foster grandmother's balcony, analyzing soil for potential evidence. The investigation extended to the removal of plants and flowers from the garden bed. Investigators seized the car that once belonged to William's foster grandmother, who had passed away in March 2021. The silver Mazda hatchback, now owned by unrelated individuals in Sydney's Sutherland Shire, underwent forensic examinations to determine if it played a role in moving William's body after his demise. But again, nothing was found. April 2022 in April 2022, Tyrrell's foster mother faced charges of providing false information to a NSW Crime Commission hearing regarding William's disappearance. The legal proceedings concluded with her acquittal in November 2022. June 27, 2023 On June 27, 2023, police recommended charges against Tyrrell's foster mother for perverting the course of justice and interfering with a corpse. The belief was that she may have concealed William's accidental death and disposed of his body. Despite extensive search efforts and forensic testing, as of June 2023, police remained uncertain about the events leading to William Terrell's disappearance, leaving the case buried in mystery. Suspects and Theories Following William Tyrrell's disappearance, over a thousand sightings were reported, contributing to the complexity of the investigation. A notable incident involved a photo from Queensland where a young boy resembling Tyrrell was pictured with a man. However, within 24 hours, police confirmed it wasn't him. Another false lead emerged when passengers and flight crew members on a New Zealand-bound flight believed they spotted Tyrrell. Police promptly met the aircraft, only to find out it was a mistake. A couple of suspects are worth mentioning. Bill Spedding In early 2015, Bill Spedding became a focal point, wrongly identified as a prime suspect. NSW police failed to verify his innocence, leading to Spedding facing serious sexual offence charges from the late 1980s. Despite these allegations being baseless, Spedding endured a public arrest, two months in prison, and intense media scrutiny. 
In March 2018, he was found not guilty of all charges. In 2019, Spedding sued NSW police for malicious prosecution, claiming charges were used to pressure him and divert attention from the Tyrrell investigation. Derek Nichols Derek Nichols, aged 90, faced allegations of inappropriate behavior towards a 23-year-old autistic man on the NSW North Coast. Despite pleading not guilty and awaiting trial, Nichols spent over 14 months in custody. Once residing near Tyrrell's foster grandmother's home, Nichols was initially considered a suspect but is no longer of interest in the cold case. Police's pursuit of Nichols reflects the challenges in managing potential leads and the subsequent impact on individuals' lives. Theory 1 Some investigators entertain the theory that William Tyrrell might have met a tragic end by falling from a second-story balcony at his foster home. This idea gained traction seven years after his disappearance when officers revisited the property. The officers were seen digging up the garden bed beneath the balcony, which had never been searched in the seven years since William's disappearance. Cadaver dogs were brought in to assist in the search. Simultaneously, heavy-duty equipment was used to clear dense bushland about one kilometer from the home, as Detective Chief Superintendent Darren Bennett had mentioned the likelihood of finding William's remains. The search concentrated on finding evidence supporting the theory that William had a fatal accident and his foster mother might know the whereabouts of his remains. Theory 2 Gary Jubelin, the former lead investigator in William Tyrrell's case, presented his thoughts on what might have happened during a Sydney Crime Writers Festival. Jubelin, who left the police force amid allegations of misconduct, expressed his beliefs that he had an idea of who might have taken William, but wasn't entirely certain. He emphasized respecting the ongoing inquest process and coroner's proceedings. This theory coincided with the naming of a new person of interest, Frank Abbott, expected to testify in the inquest. But again, there were no links found. Theory 3 Initially proposed during the unfinished inquest a few years ago, this theory outlined an abduction scenario with a dark fairy tale twist. The suggestion was that William disappeared from his foster grandmother's property while playing in the yard. The foster mother's account of the events leading up to his disappearance, including the timeline of the final photo, faced challenges from detectives. The police began considering the possibility that William might have succumbed to a fatal accident such as falling from the veranda, and his foster mother might have something to do with this. Charges were filed against William's foster mother for perverting the course of justice and interfering with a corpse. These charges stem from suspicions of a deadly accident at the Kendall home and subsequent disposal of William's body. Notably, the foster mother was charged with providing false information to the New South Wales Crime Commission. Despite the legal proceedings, William's body has not been found, leaving the mystery unresolved. Over time, people have come up with different theories about what might have happened to William Tyrrell. Despite these theories, the real truth is still unknown. This leaves us thinking, what most likely happened? The most logical scenario revolves around the possibility of a tragic accident. Given the uncertainties surrounding the timeline and the inconsistencies in witness accounts, it seems plausible that William might have had an unfortunate mishap, perhaps falling from the veranda. This aligns with the recent focus on searching the garden bed and nearby bushland for his remains. The most likely chain of events involves William's foster parents waking up early, engaging in morning activities, and the foster father leaving the house for a brief period. During this time, William, dressed in his Spider-Man suit, may have ventured to play on the veranda. The foster mother, occupied with various tasks, could have been unaware of his activities. An accidental fall from the veranda could have occurred, leading to a head injury that ultimately proved fatal. The most logical scenario suggests that in a panicked state, realizing the severity of the situation, the foster parents, overwhelmed by fear and desperation, may have taken steps to conceal the accident. This could involve the foster mother disposing of William's body, potentially explaining the delayed reporting of his disappearance and the subsequent inconsistencies in the initial accounts. 
The reason we don't think it was a premeditated abduction or an elaborate conspiracy is because the evidence, including witness statements and investigative findings, doesn't strongly support such a theory. The absence of a concrete motive, coupled with the lack of convincing evidence pointing towards an external perpetrator, makes the accidental fall hypothesis more plausible. While we may never have a definitive answer, the theory of a tragic accident followed by attempts to conceal the incident emerges as the most realistic and straightforward explanation for William Tyrrell's mysterious disappearance. We can only hope that the ongoing investigations will eventually lead to the uncovering of the truth behind William Tyrrell's disappearance. The families and the community deserve closure, and the resolution of this haunting mystery would bring solace to all those affected by this tragic event. What do you think might have happened to William Tyrrell? Leave your comments below. If you love our content and want to support the channel, feel free to check our web shop where you can find exclusive true crime merch brought to you by Bad Things.